This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. You can check out our audio podcast, How I Got My Wife to Read Comics, on iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. Now, we've mentioned in the past that we're cord cutters. We stream a lot of TV shows, but we also do have an antenna, and yes, they do still work. Yes. A lot of people think that that no longer works like, anymore. Like, if you don't have cable, you can't watch television. That's right. Ooh. Well, that's not true. But there's a lot more than just the regular broadcast networks. Um, we probably spend more time watching MeTV than the big networks. Yeah, I would, I, I would or say. Or it's pretty close. Yeah. Uh, and MeTV, you can think of it as TV Land before it became the Branson of networks where stars go to die. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you know. Uh, it, it is. It's um, just a whole bunch of classic TV shows that are rerun. And it reminds me a lot of what used to be on when I was a kid mm-hmm. on the regular networks. You'd come home from school and you'd watch reruns of these old shows. Right. And importantly, they're shown in order. So the original broadcast order. So it's Which vi- a lot of times syndicated shows aren't. Yeah, they're, it's all over the map. Right. And that makes it very easy to collect a series over time. You just basically set your DVR, and every time an episode comes up, it records it, then you're good. Mm-hmm. Um, so I thought we would cover a show that we're watching right now, which is Petticoat Junction. Um, MeTV started showing the rarely seen black and white seasons now. They're right. doing that right now. And I think right it's now. the first two or is First it two seasons. seasons. yeah. Right. And a season back then was much longer. Like 38 episodes, right. I think, was the first season. So this is all part of the Paul Henning TV show continuity along with Beverly Hillbillies and Green Acres. And mm-hmm. the success of Beverly Hillbillies spawned Petticoat Junction in 1963. And as we mentioned, it was in black and white for two seasons until 65, and then the last uh, five seasons were in color. Ran through 1970, was just before the bulk of what they called CBS's Rural Purge. And that, that reminds me of the Rural Juror. Yeah, you the know? Rural Juror. It's hard to say, Rural, rural Purge. Rural Purge. And what that meant was that CBS had these enormous ratings, but then these statisticians came in and said, well, yeah, you have ratings, but... It's people who are older, with less money. And it's not the demographic we want. And this is when demographics started. This is yes. where you started to hear the 18 to 34 and all that. Mm-hmm. So CBS responded by canceling all shows that were related to or anything having to do with rural. That was when Beverly Hillbillies went away, uh, Mayberry Mayberry RFD, a Hee Haw. <laughs> all these shows all at once pretty much got killed. And... You can tell that Paul Henning, the producer of this, comes from radio because there's never dead air on this show. Yes. You know, (laughs) uh, an example is, first off, they telegraph everything they do, Mm -hmm. and then they have little music cues, so there's never dead air. So it's like, well, let's go sit on the couch. Do, 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 and now we're on the couch. Yes. (laughs) Yes, and really, this one also plays with the idea that that people have their own music as well. You know, you often hear the same music associated with Uncle Joe or, you know, something like that. Right, yeah, pretty much have their own little motifs. Yes. It's this bucolic family comedy that the concept is Kate Bradley, B. Benderet, runs the Shady Rest Hotel near Hooterville, and it's only accessible by the Cannonball Train. Except when you can't make it, they can hike their way out to the road because the girls, for one, in a few episodes, had to take the bus to school rather than the train. So right. I, right. So B. Benderet is also known for the Jack Penny program. So she did radio. She did Bur- the Burns and Allen TV series. She was the original choice for Ethel Mertz on I Love Lucy, but she couldn't do it because she had just gotten the role on Burns and Allen. Oh. Um, she was Betty Rubble on the Flintstones. Uh, she passed away in 1968. While the show was in production. While the production. show was in production. She was quasi-replaced by June Lockhart as a country doctor. Right. Uh, and this was a new character. In previous replacements, which we're going to talk about, they actually just recast the recast. role. But in this instance, they decided that B. Benderet was too associated with it, and I think they right. couldn't do that. Right. So she has three pretty daughters, 
Bobby Joe, Billy Joe, and Betty Joe. And I loved this show as a kid because my middle name was Joe also. So, you know, Melinda Joe or Mindy Joe. Mm -hmm. And I used to get teased all the time mm -hmm. about my middle name. But here were three pretty girls who had the same mm -hmm. middle name. So I sort of related. Exactly. Uh, and there were multiple changes in those roles. And this was a good example of different people coming in and playing the same role. Bobby Joe is played by Pat Waddell from 63 to 65, basically the black and white years, mm -hmm. replaced by Laurie Saunders in color between 65 and 70. Mm -hmm. Billy Joe was Janine Riley from 63 to 65. Ganilla Hutton, the unfortunately named, named Ganilla Hutton, from 65 to 66. And then Meredith McRae took it over from 66 to 70. Mm -hmm. Only Betty Jo stayed the same. And I wonder why. Why Why didn't Betty Jo get recast? I don't know, because her name was Linda K. Henning. <laughs> yeah, so... Yeah. Her dad was the producer. <laughs> yeah, so that's how that works. And then there's Uncle Joe Carson, Edgar, Edgar Buchanan. Always has this wacky scheme to try to make money. Uh-huh. Uh, he was in over a hundred movies before this, but by this point, you know... His movie career was essentially over, and he moved into TV. Kate had this foil, Homer Bedlow, played by Charles Lane, who just recently passed away. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Who worked for the railroad and tried to shut down the cannonball. The and, the president of the railroad, though, didn't want to shut down the cannonball. Right. He liked Kate and everybody in, in Hooterville, right. but Homer Bedlow didn't. No, and Kate would always outfox uh, Homer Bedlow. Then there's Charlie and Floyd, played by Smiley Burnett and Ruth Davis, and they basically ran the train. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of stories about saving the hotel and or the train, Uncle Joe's schemes, mm -hmm. the girls' relationships with boys, and later in the series, a lot of musical numbers. It almost became like a variety show later in the series. Yes, yes. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. very strange. And part of the reason for that was... Steve Elliott, a new character, came in, played by Mike Miner, who joined the cast in 66. His actual name is Mike Federson, oh. son of producer Don Federson of My Three Sons and Family Affair. Uh-huh. <laughs> I wonder how he got that job. Yeah, so he played a crop duster who falls in love first with, with the other sisters. Yeah, first with the older sister. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And then finally fell in love with Betty Jo. They get married. They had a daughter. Kathy Joe, named for Kate, who by this point had passed away. We yeah. recently watched the Christmas episodes of this show, and one of them, it was very strange. Well, it was first, there was a black and white episode, and right. it was, they were going to decorate the train and go caroling, but Homer Bedlow kind of got in the way, right. and all this kind of stuff. Right. So it was, it was pretty enjoyable. Yes. And then, they showed a color episode for Christmas, which was l virtually the same script. I mean... Probably 90% of the script was identical word for word. But you know it's not the same episode because there were some characters that right. were different. There was the new um, middle daughter. Right. Was played by a different actress. Yes. <laughs> and then uh, the, the kid from uh, Green Acres was on it. Right. Eb. Eb, yeah. And so it was like, huh. It, why would they do that? Right. But yeah. As Mark told me at the time, it was like, well... Who was ever going to rewatch those black and white episodes? Right. At mean, the time, nobody ever thought... I mean, one of the reasons why the series went as long as it did, especially after B. Bender passed away, was they wanted to get to five color seasons. So, And, and that's the magic number is season, uh, five seasons in order to get syndication back then. Ah. So that's why the show kind of went on even after her death. It was like, well... We want to make some money of this off of syndication, so we got to get, and we're sure as heck not going to show those nasty black and white right, episodes. Yeah, no way. So, the comedy is fairly obvious, but it's fun. It's a fun show. Uh, of course, there were crossovers with Beverly Hillbillies and Green Anchors. And now, the interesting thing is, B. Benderet actually played a different character on Beverly Hillbillies as right. well. She was Jethro's throw, mom. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And characters would often appear on each other's shows. So, how do the bucolic <laughs> Petticoat Junction, the wacky uh, Beverly Hillbillies, and the surreal Green Acres, where they were just 
just breaking the fourth wall and making references to the credits being on the screen. How do they all fit in the same logical universe? <laughs> now, the only constant between the three series is Sam Drucker's general store. Sam Drucker played by Frank Cady. My theory is that Sam Drucker's store is a dimensional nexus. And where you end up depends on which door you exit out of. Well, that would make sense <laughs> because... I don't think that the cannonball ever featured very much at all in Green Acre. Right. But it was right out the back door of Sam's store. Exactly. <laughs> so, I don't know. I think they even probably went in and out that door and didn't ever see a train track if you were in the Green Acres. Right. <laughs> very strange. Mm -hmm. Well, and of course, in, the, in Green Acres, you'd always see... Um, Oliver's car drive up to the general store. Uh huh. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, just very strange how these series would manage to fit together, but they did. But we recommend Petticoat Junction. Absolutely, and that's available on MeTV. It is like six a.m. Monday through Friday, but that's with, why we DVR. Yeah, it. with DVRs, you can always tape and watch it whenever you want. Just like you can always listen to our audio podcast, mm -hmm. which is available at iTunes or on our website, sfpodcastnetwork.com. From the Pop Culture Bunker, I'm Mindy. And I'm Mark. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye-bye.